Testing one, two, testing one, two, testing one, two.
What a beautiful uh, video production. Can we give God praise uh, for the gift of God? Amen. At the end of this um, viewing tonight, we're going to have a final viewing again, and we're going to go into a, a brief time of reflection. Uh, when earth last picture 
is faded and the tubes are twisted and dried. When the oldest colors have faded. Mm. And the youngest critic has died. We shall rest and faith we shall need it. Lie down for an eon or two. For the master of all good workmen will set us at rest anew. And those who are good will be happy. They will sit in a golden chair. They will paint at a 10 leaf canvas with brushes of comet's hair. And only the master, Lord have mercy, shall praise us. And only the master shall blame. And no one will work for money. And no one will work for fame. But each in the place that they work and hold their place to the star will work to the place that he sees it, paint to the things that he sees it, of the God of the things that they are. I heard Pastor Weaver say that for 30 something years. Mm -hmm. And I promised him I would never say it. But Dr. Weaver, I got to break that promise tonight. We have come tonight uh, to celebrate the gift of God, the real gift of God, found in the person of the Reverend Dr. Alan Paul Weaver, Jr., That's right. a servant, a shepherd, a father, a grandfather, a husband, a lover of Christ, and a lover of his family. He loved his wife, Nettie, Amen. Amen. Can we give God praise for Lady Weaver? Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Come on, you can give God praise for our first lady. Bless you, bless you, bless you. Glory, glory, glory. Amen. 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 He loved Nettie uh, dearly. He loved Alan dearly. Uh, he loved Cyrus, Charles dearly, Ejenia, Noble. Amen. Earlier today, I met his uh, second sister. Uh, when I was in Orlando a few years ago, I met his sister who ride, rode around in a Cadillac. Amen. She had a wheelchair, riding around and he introduced us to her. Amen. He was a good pastor. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He was a good pastor. Hallelujah. Bless you. Mm. I, know, I know a lot of pastors. I mean, all over the country, all over the world. Some of them will come tomorrow from everywhere. But there's only one Alan Paul Weaver Jr. Mm. Bethesda, he loved this church so much that uh, he came and got me. Yeah, I heard about him in 1991, uh, started preaching in 1988, and I waited for 10 years to be ordained. And uh, the church that I was at, the preacher was Abba Habba Huba. And, um, and so, yeah, so he said, I've done all I can for you. And he sent me to Dr. Weaver. And uh, I thank God for Pastor Weaver. He 
exemplified excellence. Yes, he did. He exemplified excellence. And he did not play with the gospel. He preached the gospel. Amen. And he taught me uh, what it means uh, to be saved. I thought I knew what it meant to be saved. Kilgore, you got to be regenerated. Got to be born again. Kilgore, you got to uh, be sanctified. Yeah, the Lord has to set you apart for holy living. Kilgore, you got to be justified, son. The Lord has to make you right. You can't make yourself right. Kill God, once you do all of those things, you'll have a glorified body. Pastor has a glorified body. Hallelujah. So we're grateful tonight. Amen. Nettie, uh, uh, I'll say one thing, I'm, I'm, and I'm not going to, we'll turn it over to everyone else. Uh, him and his brother in law took me to Rochester for the first time. We were going to the National Baptist Convention in Cincinnati, Ohio. And uh, I was complaining about a situation that was happening uh, at Friendship. I've been down to Friendship 22 years. And uh, he's telling me, all right, Kilgore, I don't want to hear it anymore. And I'm like, but well, Pastor, how do I handle this? And I'm saying this five hours up to Rochester. We get Thurman in the car, and I still keep saying the same thing. How do we handle this? And uh, they stopped at a gas station. I think the town was Henrietta, New York. I might be wrong. And... Um, so I went inside complaining. And when I came out, there was no Dr. Weaver and no Thurman. <laughs> and I'm calling them on the phone. I said, man, well, I, I don't know nothing about no Henrietta. And, uh, and so uh, I hear Thurman in the back. Bro, bro, don't do that to him. He, so, he says, come around to the back of the gas station. I come around, Reverend Weaver. He, he, he. You know that man. So uh, he was an excellent uh, pastor and a great teacher. Amen. And so I'm a pastor. Uh, I'm, I'm going to uh, just continue to uh, serve God's people. Yeah, that's all he tried to do is serve right. God's that's people. Right. Right. Amen. And sometimes we serve good people. Sometimes we serve bad people. Uh -huh. Sometimes we serve non-collaborative kind of people. And, uh, but we still learn to forgive and love the people of God. Uh, Bethesda, I'm telling you, he was the gift of God who was serious about the gospel ministry. And I could never beat him to the office. He would get to the office at 5 o'clock or 4 o'clock in the morning every day. And I said, I'm going to beat this Negro to the office. And so I came in one day and I was almost at the door and I got on the phone. He reached over me, opened the door and said, you, you won't beat me, young man. <laughs> That's the kind of pastor he was. We have a brief uh, order of service we're going to share with you tonight. Uh, we're here to enjoy and to honor the gift of God. You know, one of the things I recognize is we can't uh, deify Dr. Weaver. We can't make him an icon. Yeah, he was not a savior. He was just a good shepherd. Amen. And if you don't know Jesus tonight and the pardon of your sin, I ask you to invite him to be the Lord of your life. Yeah, whatever the God, whatever gospel I preach now, I point people towards Jesus. So if you don't know Jesus tonight, now is the time to accept him as your Lord and Savior. Dr. Weaver would be so pleased. Our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, he extends his arms right now trying to uh, get someone to change their heart and mind and come on God's side. Amen? Amen. At this time, we're going to have an opening prayer by Minister Debbie Ewell Thompson. Let's receive her. And then after that, the choir will come with faith in his arms in that order. Amen? Amen. Let's pray. God of life, whose love enfolds us and spirit fills us. God of joy, whose sunrise wakes us and sunset amazes us. God of hope, who 
whose promise sustains us and power upholds us. God of love, whose patience humbles us and touch can heal us. God of peace, who breaks down barriers and walls that divide us. God of eternity, who has always loved us and by grace has saved us. Oh God, we praise your name. God, we've gathered this evening with our hearts hurting. Even so, we will worship you, God, for who you are and praise you, Almighty One, for the great things you have done as we celebrate the life and legacy of our beloved pastor, Dr. Reverend Dr. Alan Paul Weaver, Jr. Abba, Father, we acknowledge that we cannot worship without the presence of your spirit, O oh God. So we call out, come, Holy Spirit, come, heavenly dove, with your power. And we welcome the presence of the spirit of the living God who gives us peace and comforts us when we find ourselves in difficult times. Holy Spirit, fill this room. Fill this room, Holy Spirit, so that we may feel your calm, soothing presence and smell the sweet aroma of your spirit. May the joy of the Lord be evident in this worship as we celebrate the life and legacy of your manservant, Pastor Weaver. May God's grace and peace and the light of Christ shine upon every heart that we may give our respects lovingly and with all that is said and done, you sovereign God will be glorified. Now let us offer the prayer you taught your disciples to say when they pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Shepherd, 
lets me rest in a mirror's grass. Oh, yes, it is. And leaves me beside the quiet stream. He restores my failing hand. hand. And he helps me to do what I honest him the most. That's why I'm saved. That's why I'm saved. That's why I'm And when the storm, when the storm, the storm of life is raging, and the Yes, they are. Of life 
Somebody say glory. Gonna get old. All right. It sounds a little churchy in here. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Uh, just a just a few uh, a few instructions for tonight. Uh, tonight has been formatted and set up in the sense that uh, we're going to honor the family's wishes, uh, pray for a Sister Weaver, pray for the Bethesda Church. Amen. Amen. Uh, we're asking uh, this service is structured for the sons and daughters and a few friends to be able to share reflections. Uh, we have house clean cleaning. We're going to give everyone uh, two to three minutes. However, a musician, when they get to two minutes and 50 seconds, you start playing softly. And then I'll walk up and touch you on the shoulder. And even if you say, I feel led by the Spirit, the Spirit shall still lead you to go sit down. Amen? <laughs> Praise the Lord. We're going to begin with the reading of God's Word. Uh, Minister David Bishop will come. And then Reverend Henry Warnermaker will give the first reflection in that order. And all of God's people said amen. Amen. Um. <laughs> I'm reading Jeremiah 33, 1 through 3. While Jeremiah was still confined in the courtyard of the, of the guard, the word of the Lord came to him a second time. This is the Lord, says, this is the, what the Lord says. He who made the earth, the Lord who, made, who formatted it and established it, the Lord is his, is his name. Call to me. And I will answer you and tell you great and unsearchable things you do not know. The word of God for the people of God. I kind of had an idea I was going to go first. Uh, to the Weaver family, to the Bethesda family to the Nourishell community, we have lost truly a soldier of God. I met uh, Dr. Weaver uh, about, well, 43 years ago, the Wanamaker family and the Weaver family met and I was about nine years old and he had a commanding presence. You could tell when he walked up, he had this penetrating gaze. Mm -hmm. And even as a young child, I was a little nervous about that. But I thank God for um, his friendship over the years and certainly as a mentor, as a spiritual father. Just five years ago, uh, 27th of June, I was ordained into the ministry and uh, the ordination council asked me for two guests to come, uh, ministers that were ordained. And certainly who came to mind was my pastor now, Reverend Gerald Washington, Bethesda Baptist Church in Port Chester, New York. And then, of course, Dr. Weaver. And I was so blessed because earlier in the process, I, I was with another pastor and he said, there's always going to be those names on that certificate that you're going to remember. And certainly Dr. Weaver is that person as well as others. But I'm so grateful, so thankful for this opportunity just to stand before you this evening to share what a great man and what a great loss to this community. As Pastor Kilgore said, we're not going to deify him, but certainly remember him and reflect on his impact. Amen. Amen. All of God's people said amen. 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 Hey, I don't want to look, overlook anyone. I want to recognize Cyrus's partner, spouse, and husband, Ryan. Amen. He's here from Boston. Amen. 
Ryan, I want to let Ryan and the church know. Uh, I'm going to let you in on a secret. I have a nickname for Cyrus. Amen. I call him Cyrus the virus. <laughs> Amen. Because he's so uh, intellectual as far as with the computers and IT and so many. And so, Ryan, uh, we want to let you know that we love you just as well as Cyrus. Amen. God bless you. Come on, let's give God praise for him. Amen. Thank you for those first two reflections. We're moving a little further. At this time, Minister Paula Pringle and the Reverend Dr. Courtney Bryan will come with the next set of reading of the word and reflection. Good evening. I will be reading Psalm 1 from the NIV Bible. Blessed is the one who does not walk in steps with the wicked, or stand in the way that sinners take, or sit in the company of markets, but whose delight is in the law of the Lord, and who meditates on his law day and night. That person is like a tree planted by streams of water, which yields its fruit, in season and whose leaves does not wither. Whatever they do prospers. Not so the wicked. Mm. They are like chaff that the wind blows away. Therefore, the wicked will not stand in judgment, nor sinners in the assembly of the righteous. For the Lord watches over the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked leads to destruction. This is the word of, the, of God. Thanks be to God. Good evening. Yeah, I'm at that place where I have to wear glasses now. <sighs> Mrs. Weaver, Alan, Cyrus, no matter how far you go, family remains family. I grew up with you. You all were my church family. Mrs. Weaver, <laughs> when I turned 16 years old, taught me what to put in my purse <laughs> to be a proper young lady. <laughs> Youth group and childhood, friends with Alan and Cyrus will forever be a little brother. So when you weep, I weep with you. And I pray that God covers you in comfort and props you up when things become too overwhelming. I grieve with you. I grieve a pastor, a mentor, a teacher, a spiritual confidant. The Reverend Dr. Alan Paul Weaver Jr., Pastor Weaver, or as I secretly call him, P-Dub, was my pastor since I was 12. His preaching kindled my soul, but it's in his Bible studies where we grew in spiritual kinship. As a professor of religion, I do not envy the poor little Pastor Weaver having a student like me. I was the type of student that made preparation a challenge because I was going to have three million questions of the text. But I am so grateful that Pastor Weaver equipped his flock's minds as a way of developing our souls. 
He always had an answer and always encouraged theological curiosity. And yet, while Pastor Weaver prized study and the value of education, his Im biggest impact on my life was that of a worshiper. Pastor Weaver loved the Lord extravagantly, demonstratively. His soul panted for the presence of the Holy Spirit, and he cultivated that in his children, all of us biological and spiritual. And so I will miss my pastor, my spiritual father and confidant, but his wisdom, the fire in his belly and his devotion to God, his voice and his love live in me. They live in us. And as legacies go, surely there is nothing more beautiful until we meet again, Pastor Weaver. I love you. Can we give God praise for the Reverend Dr. Courtney Bryan? We're making great progress, making great progress. Amen? Amen. Amen. We do thank God for Dr. Weaver, uh, Nettie, and admission. I was very afraid of Pastor Weaver. Amen? I was scared of him. Amen. And uh, he had, I mean, he said something to me. I got quiet real quick. Amen. Because I know he was not playing. And uh, I would, we would be talking, and he'd be talking about Florida. And I said to him, I'm from East New York, you know, trying to sound tough. So he set me up. He said, Kilgo, I want you to go down to Memphis and preach for Noel Hutchinson. Noel, sit right there. I drive up. We get to the church. And I see an armed guard. I said, oh, my God, what is this? In the church, they got armed guards. I called him. I said, Pastor Weaver, you didn't tell me that they had armed guards down in Memphis. He said, I, I thought you said East New York was tough. <laughs> Only Dr. Weaver. Amen. Our third scripture, and these are scriptures that were Pastor Weaver's favorite scriptures. Minister Cheryl Ann Sylvester, and then after the Reverend Dr. Reflection will be the Reverend Dr. Kimmy Boyd. They're going to come in that order. glasses okay John 14 verses 1 to 21 do not let your heart be troubled you believe in God believe also in me mm -hmm. my father's house has many rooms if that were not so would I have told you that I am going there to prepare a place for you and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me, that you also may be where I am. You know the way to the place where I'm going? Thomas said to him, Lord, we don't know where, we, where you're going, so how can we know the way? Jesus answered, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you really know me, you will know my Father as well. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Philip said, Lord, show us the Father, and that will be enough for us. Jesus answered, don't you know me? Philip, even after I have been among you such a long time, anyone who has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Don't you believe that I am in the Father and that the Father is in me? The words I say to you, 
I do not speak on my own authority. Rather, it is the Father living in me who is doing his work. Believe me when I say that I am in the Father and, not, and the Father is in me, or at least believe on the evidence of the works themselves. Very truly, I tell you, whoever believes in me will do the works that I have been doing, and they will do even greater things than these because I am going to the Father and I will do whatever you ask in my name so that the Father may be glorified in his Son. You may ask me for anything in my name and I will do it. If you love me, keep my commands. And I will ask the Father and he will give you another advocate to help you and be with you forever. The spirit of truth, the world cannot accept him because if either sees him nor knows him, but you know him, for he lives with you and will be in you. I will not leave you. I lost my place. Now I'm going back. Philip said, Lord, show us the Father, and that will be enough for us. Jesus answered, don't you know me? Philip, even after I have been among you such a long time, anyone who has seen me has even seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Don't you believe that I am in the Father and that the Father is in me? The words I say to you, I do not speak on my own authority. Rather, it is in the Father living in me who is doing his work. Believe me when I say that I am in the Father and the Father is in me. Or I, or at least believe on the evidence of the works themselves. Very truly, I tell you, whoever believe in me will do the works I have been doing, and they will do even greater things than these because I'm going to the Father, and I will do whatever you ask in my name so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. You may ask me for anything in my name, and I will do it. If you love me, keep my commands, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to help you and be with you forever. The spirit of truth, the word cannot accept him because if neither sees him nor knows him, but you know him for he lives with you and will be in you. I will not leave you as an orphan. I will come to you before long. The world will not see me anymore, but you will see me. Because I live, you also will live. Or that day will will real or or that day you will realize that I am in my Father, and you are in me, and I am in you. Whoever has my commands and keeps them is the one who loves me. The one who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I too will love them and show myself to them the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. For those who don't know me, I am Miss Sugar. <laughs> To the Weaver family, thank you so much for sharing Dr. Weaver with us for all these years. I uh, know it had to be a toll on you that because church people are church people. Um, I like the way Dr. Weaver prepared us for ministry, for the clergy. Uh, I know he got a little, a little easy on th those that came after the group that I was a part of. Uh, but he was... He was very adamant in his training. He told us, whenever you assign to something, do just that. 
Uh, if you're going to read scripture, don't say good morning. If you do, you don't get to read for like six more months. <laughs> if you're going to pray, don't say I or me, say us, we, our. If you don't, you won't pray for about six months. He was very methodical in his training of us to the point where we did finally go to seminary. We, we were ahead of game. We weren't shocked. And he was equipping us not only for ministry, but I think he really liked to debate scripture with us. He wanted to make sure that the foundation was right. Because when he came at us, you better know. You, you cannot debate with Dr. Weaver because he's going to win. The man played chess. So uh, Dr. Johnny McCann had passed away. And this is a good example. Uh, he passed away, and that was my cousin. And so I was distraught and, and angry and mad. And so I called up Dr. Weaver. I'm, I'm the kid, I'm the Weaver kid that called and said all the ridiculous stuff. I said, Dr. Weaver, all these pastors from all over the world are coming in for Dr. McCann's funeral. He goes, yeah, they coming, they, they coming. He was a part of Empire. He was part of National. He was part of Umbra. I, I said, so what I need y'all to do is when you see the body, Wheel it in the back, and I want you to get all the mighty men together, and I want you to say, in the name of Jesus Christ, Johnny McCann, get up. <laughs> um, Pastor Weaver told me, he says, well, you know, it's too late because they already embalmed him. <laughs> and I said to him, because, you know, I got to know my scripture. I was like, you think embalming fluid? can stop the power of Jesus Christ. <laughs> then he reminded me of Mary and them when they went to the tomb. They hadn't, they, hadn't, they hadn't embalmed Jesus yet. So I was like, but what about Lazarus? Lazarus was good and dead. They embalmed him. He said, excellent point, scholar. I will miss him. We all will miss him, but he taught us so much. He left a legacy for each of us to, to, to nourish on for all the days of our lives. And for those of you who like to challenge, I am the favorite. I have always been the favorite. Okay, this favorite deacon and favorite minister, I was just the favorite everything. Okay, it stops here. <laughs> Thank you. Dr. Weaver loved everyone, and everyone loved Dr. Weaver. Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. Uh, our next segment, we're going to move a little further. Amen. I want to, uh, I was thinking while we were sitting there, um, I don't know how many years, I guess uh, 1990. Six and then 97, and I think I came here in 98. And he was telling me, he said, uh, Kilgore, here's what's going to happen. I said, what is it, Doc? He said, um, whatever you do, don't tell anyone that uh, these churches are looking at you. He said, I don't want you to leave. He said, but I will not block what God has for you in your life. So um, he said, Dean Sweet, I didn't even know he knew the Dean of Drew University. He said, I went to school with him. He's going to write a letter for you. I said, Johnny McCann's going to write a letter for you. And I said, what about you? He said, I don't have to write a letter for you. My name is on you, and it's good enough. <laughs> ah. <laughs> he never wrote a letter for me at all. <laughs> and the anointing on his life. Hallelujah. Yes, sir, it opened doors for me everywhere. Mm. Now, I don't know about you all, but I am sometimes such a sinner that I was having breakfast with him every morning. And I would come to him and put my head down and say, lay your hands on me. And he said, what do you do now? <laughs> <laughs> Lord, have mercy. 
and he kept laying that oil. That oil kept flowing. Hallelujah. And when I got ordained, he preached uh, from 2 Kings, the second chapter, Elijah and Elisha. His title was Stay Close. Nettie, I've tried to stay close to him. It's been very hard. Church, I've tried to stay close. Cyrus, uh, to Alan, everybody. It's been, you. how do you stay close to an icon? Lord have mercy. Uh, to someone who just loves the Lord so. And so I left and I went to Friendship. And the first Sunday I was there, someone sent a flower wreath as big as that picture right there, Nettie. And it says, Reverend Kilgore, rest in peace. I kid you not. I called him up. I said, Pastor, I'm coming back. He said, no, you're not. He said, stay there and make God proud. <laughs> I'm going to stay there, Pastor, and keep making God proud. Amen. <laughs> Minister Angela Farris and then the Reverend Gerald Washington from the Bethesda Baptist Church of Port Chester, New York. Let's receive them by saying amen. Amen. Good evening, saints of God. I'll be coming from Psalms 116. I love the Lord for he heard my voice. He heard my cry for mercy. Because he turned his ear to me, I will call on him as long as I live. The cords of death entangled me. The anguish of the grave came over me. I was overcome by distress and sorrow. Then I called on the name of the Lord. Lord, save me. The Lord is gracious and righteous. Our God is full of compassion. The Lord protects the unwary. When I was brought low, he saved me. Return to your rest, my soul. For the Lord has been good to you. For you, Lord, have delivered me from death. My eyes from tears, my feet from stumbling. That I may walk before the Lord in the land of the living. I trusted in the Lord when I said, I am greatly afflicted. In my alarm, I said, everyone is a liar. What shall I return to the Lord for all of his goodness to me? I will lift up the cup of salvation and I will call on the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. Precious is the sight of the Lord in the death of his servant, his faithful servant. This is the word of the Lord. Dr. Kilgore, you're doing a fantastic job. And I'm aware of the time. You diplomatically put that over. And I commend you. Reverend Weaver and I had a lot in common. I was here when he was installed. Gardner Taylor preached in the morning, and his uncle preached in the afternoon. I remember the theme of his uncle's sermon. Up from the wilderness, leaning on the beloved. And Reverend and I used to talk about that. How did you remember such a long time ago? Reverend Weaver celebrated his 43rd uh, pastoral anniversary, and I celebrated 42. 
So we communed together often and talked about our journey. Everything that was said is so true. He was a teacher, and not only a teacher, he was an example. That's right. He was a positive example. And we talked many times about how long we would be pastoring, which leads me to this. We went to Orlando, Florida on our vacation. We landed in Kennedy Airport, my daughter and my wife, and we drove back home. Along the way, we decided to go up Route 1, the Post Road, and we stopped at the Mamaroneck Diner. We wanted to grab a bite to eat. When we went in, we took a booth, and my wife said, isn't that Dr. Weaver over there sitting at the counter, not the booth? He was sitting by himself. And I got up and I said, hey, Doc, you know how preachers do. And he said, pray for me. And that bothered me. I knew that he was wrestling with something, with a decision or something like we all do. Fast forward to Tate, I called him and he told me that he had to have open heart surgery and that he was going to Montefiore Hospital and he was going to be in there for a month. Now, let me quickly say this. I've never met a man who embraced the ultimate yeah. like Dr. Weaver. He taught me how to die. Now I'm telling you the truth. He never flinched when it comes to eternity because he knew his father. He knew his father. And he told me he was going into Montefiore and he would be in there for a month. Now, I believe that even though Reverend Weaver did not fear death, he thought he was coming out of that hospital. And our friendship was so strong and family ties that he thought he would, I believe that he was coming out. And his son, I commend you for keeping everyone informed of his progress. I commend you for that. And as I learned that he was having complications, I was a little concerned about it. And so God took him home. Now let me say this. History will define our ministries. Abraham Lincoln presidency was defined years later. And we learned what a great president he was during that time. And so, my beloved, I tell you this, if my word means anything, and I've been pastoring for 42 years, we went through storms like the young lady. I enjoyed her. When Weaver taught you, you learned something. And he, he was a challenging preacher. Mm -hmm. He was a confident preacher. He did not bend. He, he was confident in what God uh, anointed him to do. And Reverend Wanamaker, God bless you. You called and asked me and Reverend Weaver to lay hands on you. And I was honored to do that. And so to God be the glory. For the great things that he has done and is doing. Praise the Lord. Let's give God praise for Dr. Gerald Washington. Amen. Amen. We're almost, we're almost there. 
this time, let's now receive Minister Sabrina Trent, and uh, a song will come to us from Mrs. Margaret Richmond in that order. Amen. I will be reading in your hearing. 1 Corinthians 15, verses 12 through 28. But if it is preached that Christ has been raised from the dead, how can some of you say that there is no resurrection of the dead? If there is no resurrection of the dead, then not even Christ has been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, our preaching is useless, and so is your faith. More than that, we are then found to be false witnesses about God. For we have testified about God that he raised Christ from the dead. But he did not raise him if, in fact, the dead are not raised. For if the dead are not raised, then Christ has not been raised either. And if Christ has not been raised, your faith is futile. You are still in your sins. Then those also who have fallen asleep in Christ are lost. If only for this life we have hope in Christ, we are all we are of all people most to be pitied. But Christ has indeed been raised from the dead. Amen. The first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For since death came through a man, the resurrection of the dead comes also through a man. For as in Adam all die, so in Christ all will be made alive. But each in turn, Christ, the first fruits, then when he comes, those who belong to him. Then the end will come when he hands over the kingdom to God the Father after he has destroyed all dominion, authority, and power. For he must reign until he has put all his enemies under his feet. The last enemy to be destroyed is death. For he has put everything under his feet. Now, when it says that everything has been put under him, it is clear that this does not include God himself, who put everything under Christ. When he has done this, then the son himself will be made subject to him who put everything under him so that God may be all in all. This is the word of God. Thanks be to God. Good evening, everybody. I think I'm going to sing Peace in the Valley. <clears throat> I am tired and so weary, but I must. Tell the Lord, come to call me, call me away. Where the morning is bright and the land. 
Come on, let's give God praise for Sister Richardson. Amen. Sister Richardson, I bless God for you. Amen. Praise the Lord. You cleaned it up for your pastor. When he got up, he was talking over here saying, Dr. Kilgore. I said, wait a minute. I'm not over there. Who is he talking to? Amen. So we thank God that there's peace in the valley. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. At this time, Minister Dion P. Allen will come with her reflection. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. I met Dr. Weaver back in 2000. And I learned very quickly the shepherd that he was until he died. See, so yeah, he interviewed me. And while there, it got dark outside. Alan Paul Weaver III might not remember this, but he came to see his dad. And he said to him, 
walk her to the parking lot. It's dark. Right away, I knew what he was from that. But I had a terrible accident. And him and Deacon Nettie Weaver, all the way in Alabama, came there and stood by my bedside and my daughters and prayed over us. Mm -hmm. So I knew what he was. See, I'm not from this church. I'm a Seventh-day Adventist. I'm his musician. But Dr. Weaver was no less demanding on his music than he was with his ministers. That's right. That's right. And we all knew, I sit by that corner with the white, and sometimes I duck because I'd see the finger. <laughs> and sure enough, he had a song. He would just say, Miss Dion, do you know that song? I'd say, yes. He'd say, I want that after this. See, I came here for one choir, but on my interview, he said, you're going to be doing the 730 choir two weeks a month, and I need a cantata every other year. He pushed you, and he stood by you. That's right. That's right. See? I became ordained um, to the gospel ministers a couple of months ago. And Dr. Weaver was the first pastor that recognized me the day after by my title. I'll never forget that. He supported you all the way. And because of that, I will never, ever forget him. He became real good friends with my pastor, Dr. R.C. Connor at the time. And they remained close to this day. Uh, although Doc, he's not, he was away from here at the time, they still kept in contact. And in fostering that bond, the choir bonded. See, when my choir comes, Bethesda's choir comes. And when I go, they both go. And it's because of the leadership. And so I will always be grateful to him for standing up with us, with our music, supporting us, and always commending us on a good job. You need that sometimes. And he made sure we got that. So Deacon Weaver, she's a nurse. I'm a nurse. And we get together on that level all the time. Pastor Allen. Well, we had to get together because, you see, Dr. Weaver gave us demands. We had to write plays and put music to it. And so we spent a lot of time in Janaya. And, of course, Noble, who plays the violin. We chat about that, too. So I will tell you, having gone through this twice in the last two years, it won't always be like this. The sun will shine again. Mm -hmm. God will wipe all those tears from your eyes. It won't always be like this. Amen. Can we give God praise for Elder Minister Dion P. Allen? Amen. We're almost there. Our next reflection it's going to come from Minister Christopher Tuck, and then afterwards, Elder Dr. Shalala Smalley, in that order. Amen? We're making our way to the close. Good evening, folks. Um, Weaver family, I love you. This is This is... You know that I grew up here. You know, I ran around with, with Cyrus and Alan when we were little, and, and, and the teaching that I've sat under, the, the, the shepherd of this house, the, 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 the faith that he instilled, the, the Bible teaching that he instilled, the, the way he stood in the gap. Mm -hmm. The way he stood in the gap is really what I came to testify about. I, um, not a lot of people know this. Alan knows it, and, and you know, you know, Pastor... In my life, I, I, I've seen two distinct miracles in my life. My, my dad 
and, and another one that I'm going to talk about. I don't, I don't have time to, to talk about Dad, but um, he's doing well, 88 years old. Mm. Um, I, have a, I have a young son, two sons. The, the younger one, uh, Cyrus, has uh, somewhere on the autism spectrum disorder, you know, somewhere, somewhere in there. And, uh, you know, just delayed from, from birth, you know, early intervention was, was done and, and, you know, everything, head up was delayed, rolling over was delayed, walking was delayed, you know, talking was delayed. And, and when, when, the, when the talking part came up, he was way older than, than he should have been and words just were not happening to the point where I had some, some therapists talk to me about sign language. Sign language. <laughs> and, uh, you know, something told me, go talk to pastor. Hmm. It wasn't planned. I went to his office door one day and knocked, knocked, knocked. You know, there was like two doors, you know, the offices. Wasn't sure if he heard me. Knocked. It, it, since it was unannounced, I could, I could hear one door opening and then he came out. And, and he opened the door and, it, and he put his foot in the door. Remember that. I'm going to get back to that. He put his foot in the door. You know, kind of like, what is it? You know, he had something in his hand. And, and you know, he was busy. He was doing something. But, but he came out. And I explained to him what was going on. I talked to him about the sign language and, and the words. And, and he said, give them to me. I was holding Cyrus at the time. I brought Cyrus with me. Something told me, don't just go talk to him, but bring, bring, him, bring him with you. You know, you know your, 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 your disciples, they, they, couldn't, they couldn't do it. But, but if you will. If you will. You know, and, and I told him the story. Kept his foot in the door. We, we didn't go inside and, you know, light candles and lay out a sheet. And He kept his foot in the door. He said, give him to me. Hold this. He had something in his hand. He put his hand on his mouth. Mm. I don't remember exactly what he said, but I remember him praying for every part. Bless his lips, bless his mm. tongue, bless his throat, bless his voice box. Bless. And one thing I remember is that he said, his name is Cyrus. He said, God, you gave, my name is Chris. He said, God, you gave Cyrus to Chris so that he could teach him. But you gave Cyrus to Chris so that Chris can learn from him too. Mm. Give him words. Give him words. Now there was no lightning strike in. There was no, this little boy didn't start reading the encyclopedia at the moment. But I never learned sign language. <laughs> Cyrus never learned sign language. He doesn't know how to be quiet nowadays. <laughs> be careful what you pray for. But, but my point, he put his foot in the door. We got to put our foot in the door for each other. We've got to stand in the gap for each other. We've got to know when your brother or your sister needs something and you got to stop what you're doing. Put, the, put your foot in the door of life. Stand in the gap and pray. Believe and have faith that God will. God will. So stand in the gap today. And all of God's people said amen. 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 Pastor Weaver was here right now. He said, Kilgore, what did you ask him to do? Read the scripture. What did he do? He didn't read the scripture. He said he had a miracle talk to talk about. Amen. Let's receive uh, Reverend Dr. Uh, Shalala Smalley at this time. Shalala, bless you. Hello, my brothers and sisters. I'm senior pastor of Macedonia Church of the Living God in Leesburg, Florida. And to my dear sister, 
Deacon Weaver and to the Weaver family and to the Bethesda family and all of us who have come to share in the celebration of life of our brother. I met Reverend Weaver 45 years ago when he was adjunct faculty at Bethune-Cookman and I had returned to my alma mater as assistant professor of education. One day he and Reverend Clarence Weaver were having lunch at Morrison's. I frequented the place and they invited me to the table. And when I got there, they said, tell us about your church affiliation and your role. And I began to lament about the call of God on my life and that I was not doing that. And the reason I wasn't doing it is because I had a great grandmother who was a preacher and pastor. My great aunt, her daughter, and my mother had started a church in May of 1954, just before the board of Brown versus the Board of Ed. And I had watched the schisms and the isms and the non-acceptance that they had all of those years. So here it is, 1978, and I'm being called to ministry. And I simply said, I'm not doing that. I am not going to be a fourth generation female pastor and preacher, and, and I'm not doing this. And he listened to me lament over and over again. And he and Reverend Glover tried to quell that, and I, I just wasn't having it. And so when I left the table, I was convinced that I had choices and that I was not doing it. Well, one day I saw Weaver on campus and I called him Weaver and he said, Shalia, I wanna take you to lunch. I wanna talk about some things. I thought, am I in trouble? Am I in the principal's office or what? We got to lunch and of course we exchanged pleasantries right quickly and then he said, I have listened to you talk about and lament about and bemoan about not wanting to answer the call of God on your life. And he said, I have listened intensely. And I knew he had because he was able to recount the kinds of things I had said. He said, but I came to tell you the call of God on your life ain't about you. It ain't about you. It's about the God that called you. You've got to get a grip with the gravity of the call of God and living out the purpose of God for your life, regardless of the isms and the schisms that your parents and great grandparents have gone through. I thought, I don't even know this dude like this. <laughs> He's got some nerve. He doesn't even know me that well. And he did not let up. But I can say this tonight, that those words, the call of God on your life is not about you, became my passion for life. And so as they moved on and, and came up this way to, to pastor, and, and we stayed in touch over the years, and every now and then I'd get a phone call. Shalia? I said, oh gosh. Hey, big brother, what's up? He would talk to me about things in ministry, and I had the opportunity to, to call him many times. I, I really enjoyed being able to talk to him. When I wanted my uh, some, some information about, or at least wisdom, and I wanted uh, to hear some scholarly perspectives on uh, in-depth Bible studies, and, and I wanted some information on how to start a Bible college and ministry training for my denomination, Church of the Living God. And when I wanted to have my theology and my chain yanked, I would call Weaver and he would always be there for me. And certainly he would push me and he would challenge me. And then he was there for me for some major things in my life. 21 years ago, I had just earned tenure and promotion at University of Central Florida. And that was a difficult task, but I did. And one year later, the Lord said, walk away from that and go back to Leesburg and help your mother build and open the new church. I called Weaver. He said, what decision have you made? I said, we were, it ain't about tenure. It's about the call of God on my life. And so he applauded that and, and we talked about what that kind of a life would look like. And then seven years ago, he was there for me. I wrote a book, a number one bestseller, giving, giving it all up, walk away and embrace your passion. And I had an opportunity to write about Reverend Dr. Weaver and the impact that he had had upon my life. I sent him a signed copy, and all of you know, in his own humble way, his reply was, I did what I had to do, and you did what you had to do. He came uh, to the church uh, five years ago. Um, my church was celebrating my 40 years in ministry, and they said, 
whom would you like to speak in, on your um, our, our banquet? And I said, I'm going to give you one name, and if he can't come, move the date. Reverend Dr. Alan Paul Weaver, Jr. I want you to know he came and wrecked the place in 17 minutes and sat down. He walked to every table and greeted every group of people. Who does that? Only Reverend Dr. Alan Paul Weaver. And when my mother transitioned last year, he quickly called and he prayed with me, continued to check on me and called others mutual friends and had them do the same. Time will not permit me to talk about my dear friend, my big brother. I will cherish the memories of him being my friend and my big brother. I'm an only child. But more than that, I am eternally grateful for the unspoken mentorship. He had a way of holding my hand through the ministry challenges and not leaving a fingerprint to be traced. And at the same time, he left an indelible impression upon my life and my ministry. But even bigger than that, he was a difference maker and he changed lives. And so tonight, I will miss my friend, my big brother, my mentor, but I look forward to seeing him in the morning. All right. Amen. We give God the glory, the honor, and praise. I heard Brother Chris say that uh, Dr. Weaver had his foot in the door. You know, uh, when it came to diversity in ministry, uh, Pastor was the first one to open the door for women to come to the, Nat to the uh, Baptist Ministers Conference. Yeah, he was the first one to ordain female deacons here at this church. First one to have women uh, engaged in ministry, always being the first. Amen? And then he knows how to continue to open doors. Amen. Even at the end of his uh, uh, tenure, he, he had such grace. He called me and said, Kilgore, you're going to be the next catechist. I said, Kilgore, how am I, how am I going to do that, Doc? Uh, we got to have a vote. He said, I'm just going to call the moderator and tell him that you're the next catechist. And that's exactly what he did. Amen. So we thank God for Dr. Weaver. We're moving forward. We have two more reflections um, uh, that the family will um, offer to you. And then Reverend Tamarica Benba will read the scripture and then the family will come with their remarks. Uh, Reverend Dr. Johnny Turner, pastor's dear friend, and then the Reverend Dr. Clifford Jones from Friendship Baptist Church in Charlotte, North Carolina, which please come in that order before the family and before uh, Reverend Kabemba, please. Now, musicians, I said that the people go over two minutes and 50 seconds. You all have not played a key yet. Amen? <laughs> Amen. <laughs> God is gracious and God is better than good. This is a very hard task. I have been grieving just like you, in and out. I met Dr. Weaver at the Florida General Baptist State Convention in Florida, Monday after the first Sunday in April 1974. That's how long we've known each other. In the very moment that we met, we had the same similar ideas and we clung together. And over the years, when we were still pastoring in Florida, he came, I remember when he was called to this church, I too was on the campus of Bethune-Cookman College. 
and we shared and shared and shared. And then I came to New York. We talked every week over the years, sometimes twice a week, sometimes once a week. And we just always had something to talk about biblical texts, theology, ethics, you name it. He would call and say, well, I have a passage. I need your intellect and your wisdom. I said, my wisdom? Yes, Johnny, your wisdom. And I would share with him, and likewise, the same for him. Every book that I have written, Alan Paul Weaver had something in terms of encouragement. The last document that I've written was an article which is going to be published soon. Dr. Weaver was interacting with me. And when he got sick, he said, I need your prayers. And I said, I will. I prayed and I prayed, but God knows best. I'm praying for the family continuously. Continue to look to the hills from whence cometh your help. Not some of your help, but all of your help comes from the Lord. I'm going to give this subject of my book. And he had a whole lot to say about it. Remember that God is a strong shelter. Grace and peace be unto you from God our Father and Jesus Christ his Son, our living Lord and our reigning and supreme Savior. A lot has been said, volumes more could be said, but we've gathered not as persons who are hopeless, as people of faith. I was reading this book on Western, the Western thought and philosophy of death and dying by one Gordon, published 1968. And um, one Marcel, I think he was a French philosopher, made the statement, to love someone is to say they will never die. Our personal grief and sadness It's deep. <laughs> but we ought to be happy for husband, Mrs. Cooking, of course, father, pastor, friend. And just imagine in the 41 years he has been here, he has felt like many of you are feeling as your pastor. Over and over and over and over. When he stood there, off time sick. It's true. You know it. Not yep. complaining. Fussed that. We ought to stay home and rest, but he'd come on anyhow. 
You knew him. So you feel some of what he felt. To love someone is to say that they will not die. What does that mean? That as long as you have your memory, he's alive. When you love someone, I talk street, they would say to the bone. Wasn't always a Christian preacher as uh, Dr. Uh, Shalia. Um, sad, yeah, but so happy for him. Extremely happy for him. Uh, called me Father's Day and, uh, hey, preacher. Uh, and we talked, not knowing that that would be the last time. But it won't be the last time. Because we're not people who are hopeless. To love someone is to say that they will never die. As long as you can think, as long as you can feel, and as long as you have your faith. For the scripture teaches, blessed are, you know the scriptures, the dead who die in the Lord, in Christos, in the Lord. Those who die in the Lord shall, talk to me somebody, rest, he's resting. I haven't seen him yet, but I understand he looks pretty good. If, uh, see him tomorrow, don't want to see him there because he can't talk back to me and he could have a bit of a sharp tongue. <laughs> he did. Thank you for sharing him with us. Sons, thank you for sharing dad with us. My kids fussed with me because they said I was never there. And they're probably right because I was at church. Wife fussed at me, Sister Nettie, because I told her she had been me and I had been her. I'd have left her a long time ago. <laughs> And she said, don't say that. Smile. Thank God for the gift given for the season. Be happy. The pastor's are resting now. No more of those injections and being tired. No more restricted diet. No more. What is that piano? Is that for me? Um, Okay. Well, in, 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 pure pe in pure preaching circles, you need to give me a C, because that means I should be tuning up now. So don't, don't, don't do that, because I know what that means. Thank you. God bless you. We interrupt the regularly scheduled program. Uh, these scriptures were picked by my mother uh, because they were